All right, so let's now answer example five. It says Melanie takes out a loan of $100,000 to start up a new business. The bank charges her interest at a rate of 4.26% per annum compounding monthly. She will repay the loan over 20 years, making monthly payments of $620. The final payment will be different to the others. So she can fully repay the loan in, 20 year per in the 20 year period. Find the value of the final payment. All right, so to answer this, we're going to bring up our finance solver. So menu eight, one. Let's now put in the information that we know. We know for the N here that she's paying it off over 20 years and she's paying it off monthly. So it's gonna be 20 times 12. So she's gonna make 240 payments. My interest rate is going to be 4.26, 4.26. My present value, my present value of the loan is simply going to be $100,000. And remember, that's positive because the bank is lending it to us. It's money in our pocket. But the payments that I'm going to make is money that I'm giving to the bank. So it's negative. It's money coming out of my pocket. So it's negative $620. My future value is the thing I'm going to try to solve for. What is, uh, what is going to be the balance of my loan after making all of these payments? And then of course, we come down to PPY and CPY, both of which are gonna be 12 because it's compounding monthly. Hit tab, hit tab, hit tab, 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 tab. Now we hit enter. Now I'm gonna end up with $87.62. Now what does this mean? When you're dealing with a reducing balance loan in the finance solver, and you're figuring out your future value, if it's positive, what that means is that you've given the bank too much money. You've given them too much money. You've overpaid. So something's gone wrong. We shouldn't have overpaid. We should have adjusted our last payment in order that we don't overpay them. So this is what we're going to do now. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change this to one less payment. So now it's 239. So now I'm gonna come back here, put my cursor in um, FE and hit enter. And now you can see after 239 payments, the, what I have owing is $530.48. And you can see I've got a negative there, which means it's still owing. Would you agree that this is the final balance? This is the final balance before, before this whole thing is paid off. Because I've only got one more payment to go. I've only got one more payment to go. And then this, fully, this thing has to be fully paid off. So just to reiterate here, what you're seeing here, this 530 is my final balance owing. So what we have to do now to figure out how much my final payment has to be is we simply have to go, all right, I know I have to give them $530, but then I also have to add on the interest that is accrued on this $530 in this last month. So let's just write this down to be nice and neat here. So what I'm going to write down is, I'll zoom in, my final balance, my final balance owing. And then in brackets, I'm gonna say after 239 payments. So one less than it fully being paid off is going to be equal to money 530, 530. 0.488 dot dot dot. And I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to round it yet. To now figure out, and I'll grab another color here, to now figure out my final payment. To figure out my final payment now, what it's going to be equal to is, it's going to be equal to my final balance owing, and then I need to plus onto that. Now this is the important part. It's the interest, but it's the interest on that final balance. So I'm gonna write it in, interest on the final balance. And I'll put owing as well. So this is what we're going to do. My final balance is $530 and 488 dot 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 plus. Now to figure out <clears throat> the interest on the final balance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go brackets. I'm going to take 530.48 dot dot dot. And I'm going to times it by. Now my R value is 4.26. So I go 4.26. I divide it by 12 and then I divide the whole thing by 100. And that's going to give me how much interest is generated on this much right here. And we close it off. And as you can see, I'm just using the same formula than what we saw right here. So I'm just using that formula right there. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to steal this number. 
Then I'm going to take it. I'm going to go Control C to paste it. Then I'll go Escape. And then I'm going to go Control V to paste it. Then I'm going to get rid of my negative because I don't need the negative. Uh, and then I might go, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Times, Control Divide. Then I'm going to go 4.26, 4.26 divided by 12. And I'm going to put it over 100. Then I'm going to hit enter. And this is how much interest is generated on it, $1.88. So now what I have to do is I have to go 530.488... plus 1.88... And this is going to give me my final answer. And I might even do it in orange just to be fun. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number here. I'm going to hit enter to bring it down. Plus, I'm up here, take that number. I'm going to end up with, drum roll, 532.37. That right there, everyone, is my final amount owing. Sorry, it's my final payment, rather. It's my final payment. There it is. Whew. So that's the thinking behind it. And it's important that you understand the thinking behind it. I'm now going to show you an alternative way to answer this question. We're going to go back into the finance solver. So menu, 8-1. Let's think this through for a minute. So this is another way to do it. Arguably a bit easier. Once we're here and we know that our final balance owing is this much money, what we could do is we could take this, go control C, and then we could tab, 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 all the way to my present value and I could paste it in my present value. I would have to get rid of the negative because remember my present value is going to be positive because it's the amount that I still have in my pocket. But I'm going to put it there. <clears throat> and now I'm going to say, you know what? I only have one more payment to go. The balance is 530. I don't know what my final payment has to be. I have to figure out what the final payment is. So I'm going to make that um, nothing. I leave it blank. And I know that my future value after this one more payment has to be zero. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's just run through that again. I'm saying I've got one more payment of this much money of the balance owing. I have to figure out the interest of this uh, as we're going along. And then I'm trying to say, all right, I've got one more payment of this much money. I want it to hit zero. What is that final payment going to be? I hit enter. And as you can see, 532.37, we got the same number. And that's because the finance solver is doing all of this calculations in the background. It's figuring out what the interest on this final payment is going to be and adding it onto it. So this is another way to do it. And I think you would agree with me. Do you find this a way easier? I think it is easier. Now, it's really, really important that you understand how to do this way, uh, because as we go through another example, you're going to see that this can save you a lot of time uh, sometimes. But sometimes this way is easier. At the end of the day, don't look for like a rote way to answer these questions that don't require you to think. You need to understand what you're doing if you want to be successful, uh, especially in financial maths, but pretty much for all your subjects, isn't it? All right, see you in the next one.